If you've ever wondered how to make your animations ease, bounce and elastic inside of DaVinci Resolve, then here is how you do it. So when you want to move something in Fusion, you mark it with one keyframe at one point in the timeline, move the timeline along and set the other keyframe at the end. And this is what Fusion calls a linear movement, meaning it moves at a constant speed from the first keyframe to the last keyframe when it comes to a dead stop. Now this can sometimes look a bit unnatural because we're not really used to seeing things move this way in the real world. They slow to a stop or they overshoot or they bounce, for example. They almost never come to a dead stop Within Fusion, there's a bunch of different ways that you can add to these more complex movements to your animations. Here's a few of the methods that I use. So the first and most simple way is to use the spline editor. This is, in my opinion, the fastest way to do it, and it's probably my most commonly used method of easing movements. To show you how to do this, I've brought this little mock-up into Fusion from Affinity Designer. If you're interested in how to bring things from Affinity into Fusion, I made an entire video dedicated to this, so I'll link it here if you're interested in watching that. But regardless of what it is you're trying to move, this method should work. So I've set this up here to go from zero to one, full sized over the course of 30 frames. And if we just jump into the spline tab up here, we can see that it's a completely straight line from one keyframe to the next. Side note, if you hit this little icon here, it will full size the spline that you're working on. Now, if we highlight these two keyframes and hit F on the keyboard, that'll ease each of the keyframes, which is already a lot more pleasing to the eye. It just looks a lot better already. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset these by hitting Shift and L, which brings it back to a linear curve. And I'm going to right click them and go to Ease. And you'll see a bunch of different options show up. So these are all mathematical curve functions. And if you're unsure what these mean or what they actually look like, then don't worry, you will get used to them. In the meantime, I've linked a website in the description that you can go and look over exactly what all of these mean. But for now, I'm going to select this one here, Outback Cubic. This is one of my favourite ones because it overshoots and then eventually eases back into place, which could be quite a good look if you're trying to move something or have it jump up in size. Now this little dialogue tool here lets you adjust the parameters in finer detail, which is quite handy so you can adjust it so it really overshoots or maybe just a little bit. You just tweak these and move it about and you can create a completely custom curve. You can also use these little handles in the spline editor to just adjust them there and create a curve that's really custom. These kind of work a bit like the handles inside like Affinity Designer, for example. They effectively just work the same way. You just pull on them and you can curve the path. Now this looks quite good already, but another thing you could do to really sell the effect, if you go into the transform node that we're using to animate this and you go into the settings here, you can tick add motion blur and that just really sells it. It'll just blur it as it's moving in. Now there's a bunch of different curves to choose from inside the spline editor and that's really handy and a really quick way to do it. But we're missing some of the more complex movements like elastic and bounce. So how do we add these in? They don't seem to be options here. Well, we can use a process called animation curves. Now we're going to get a little bit technical here and animation curves can be quite tedious to set up. So if you're just looking for a much simpler way to set up elastic and bounce animations, then skip ahead to this time frame here. Otherwise, if you're along for the ride, here is how you do it. So they work by setting up your animation as a percentage of your overall composition length, rather than just setting a keyframe at one point and a keyframe at another. So back in my little composition here, I'm going to right click on the size parameter in my transform node and go to modify with and hit anim curves. It will change in my composition, but don't worry about that just now. Up here, you'll notice that we can now click on the modifiers tab. In modifiers, you'll find a bunch of options, including curve shape, scale, and timing. And this is where we're going to adjust our animation. So click on the curve type and select easing. Set the scale to one, meaning we want it to scale to one times its size. And right now we're going to set it to ease out as elastic. And if you play that, you'll notice that we have this elastic animation spanning the entirety of the composition length. Now we might not want it to be the full length of the composition. So from here, we could go into the timing and start to move about the time scale. So this kind of works like a speed modifier. So if you set it to two, it'll be two times the speed and therefore it will take up half of the composition. If you set it to three, it'll be three times speed and take up 30% and so on. So I'm just going to set it to four right now. Now, if you actually jump back into your spline tab, you'll notice that this will show you a visual representation of the animation across time. And the timing offset lets you adjust where the animation starts and ends. So you can just move this about to suit where you want it to be in the composition. 
and have that movement start at any particular point that you want. So it would just work the exact same way as if you had set keyframes. And if you wanted to say, have the logo start from 50% of size rather than 0%, you could go back into the scale section and adjust the scale offset. And just be aware that this will have a knock-on effect for the total scale value. So if I'm starting at 0.5, for example, I'll need to set the scale to 0.52 so that we have it scaled to one times its size in total. Now, quick point here, because this is a problem that you might run into. So if you wanted to use your anon curves for your X, Y position, you'll notice that, wait a minute, it's not an option. And that's because X, Y is technically two parameters, not one. So in order to be able to add an anim curve to one, you have to be able to separate the X and Y path. Now this works in a similar way if you've ever done this in After Effects. Right click your X and Y parameters, go down to Modify With and select X, Y path. Now if you jump back into the Modifiers tab again, you'll notice that it's separated out all the different paths. So you could just select X or Y path and right click that and go Modify With Anim Curves. And this will add on another modifier. And from there, it just works the exact same way as it would for a single parameter. Now, believe me, I know how annoying this is to set up. That's a lot of steps to just set up a simple elastic or bounce animation. I really wish that Blackmagic would just add these into the spline editor and you can right click and select it from ease. But until they do add it, there is thankfully a much, much simpler way to set these up. And that is using Motion Pal. The Motion Pal is a little plugin that you can add to Fusion and it's from the guys at Learn Now FX. And once you install it, if you right click on the parameter that you want to animate and you go Modify With Motion Pal. Now, if you jump back into the Modifiers tab again, there you can set the start and end point for the animation. And then you have this little slider that you can then keyframe to animate the movement. From there, you click on curves and you have all these different curves to choose from, including bounce and elastic animations. You can also bake the animations in so that they're there in case someone doesn't have the plugin and you're passing the session over to them. So I've added a link in the description to the plugin download. There's a cost associated to that plugin. I think it's like $15. And obviously I'm not getting a kickback by saying that. I don't have nearly enough subscribers for that. But honestly, it's just a really, really great plugin and it saved me a whole bunch of time when it's setting up these kind of animations. I use it all the time. If paying for things ain't your thing, then there's a free version on the We Suck Less forum, which I've left a link to in the description as well. Honestly, I would recommend just getting yourself on that forum anyway. If you're using DaVinci Resolve, it's such a good resource and there's people on there talking about all the different ways that they use it and they've got solutions for everything on there. So highly, highly recommend that you get yourself on it. And there you have it. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. My name is Ryan, I'm a content creator and I show you how to use DaVinci Resolve and the Affinity Suite to basically replace Adobe. So if that's your thing, hit the subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one.